It's been a crazy week for the crypto markets, but I want to focus today on several things with the SEC. First, the Empower Oversight request to have an investigation has caught the attention of Law360 in a new publication. Gary Gensler is doubling down on regulating crypto as securities, and Hester Peirce had a lengthy interview with Protocol, where we just saw Stu Alderati had one recently, but she answers a lot of questions and talks about why she's not not your crypto mom. But if we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. As painful as this may be, let's take a quick look at the crypto market that is down almost 7% on the 24-hour to 1.35 trillion Bitcoin at 30,500 Ethereum, back down to 2,200 XRP at about 45 cents. And you can see down the list of the top cryptos, 20 plus percent losses on the seven day. Uh, by now, I'm sure you've heard about what happened to Luna dropping all the way down to 35 with a 97% loss on the week uh, with everything happening there, which we won't cover here uh, because it's not necessarily germane to what we talk about, but uh, do keep that in the back of your mind. It has, It is having an overall impact. Now, just a quick reminder linked in the video description, uh, Voyager gives you an opportunity to earn while you hold your crypto. At this point, with the market down, I would imagine most of the people in the community are holding rather than just selling off. And so as such, it's a great time to continue to earn while you wait for the market to recover. 12% on DOT, 9% or up to 9% on USDC, and a slew of other cryptos available for earning. $25 in free Bitcoin when you sign up uh, and deposit and trade $100 in crypto. Linked in the video description, I'll pin it in the top comment as well. One of the few remaining players offering yield of the major offering Celsius Nexo block five no longer taking new U.S. deposits. Now here in Law360, I won't go through this in too much detail because we did look at it yesterday. I'll link that video in the video description as well and I can pin it up there in the top right hand corner. Uh, the SEC was asked to probe ex officials crypto statements is a pretty general title but this is the request from Empower Oversight calling out Bill Hinman and what he did while at the SEC. In the letter that they published just the other day, 39 pages, they talked about things that were happening that demonstrated the conflicts of interest. Uh, Jason Foster, president of Empower Oversight, said directives without compliance monitoring and sanctions for noncompliance are not meaningful. They are window dressings in reference to the fact that Bill Hinman was told by the Ethics Committee that he should not be meeting with people at Simpson Thatcher. He did. He continued to receive millions in his retirement benefits while at the SEC. Despite all of the things that were told to him, he continued to act in opposition. And of course, we are very familiar that in the same month that he departed the SEC, December of 2020, the agency filed its lawsuit against Ripple, one of Ethereum's rivals, alleging that XRP was a security, meaning the company's offering and sales of XRP violated securities laws. This is an ongoing battle. One thing of note here, and I believe it was John Deaton that pointed this out on Twitter, is Law360 has a very large audience uh, in the legal community. So we're seeing that uh, this case and the actions here, the uh, suggestion of a full-on investigation of Hinman and others at the SEC is catching the eye of the legal community. So I will be curious to see what other legal actions we see begin to take place over the course of the uh, upcoming weeks and months. So do stay tuned, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will keep you posted on any other potential legal fights that may be added uh, in addition to the ongoing SEC versus Ripple case that we cover in detail. 
In Yahoo Finance today, SEC Chair Gensler doubles down on regulating crypto as securities. This was just published earlier this morning. SEC Chair Gary Gensler is doubling down on his claim that most cryptos constitute securities as the administration looks to regulate digital assets. The chairman continues to state claim for the agency that agency's authority and oversight amidst a debate over which financial regulators should oversee crypto. Most crypto tokens involve a group of entrepreneurs raising money from the public in anticipation of profits, the hallmark of an investment contract or a security under our jurisdiction, Gensler said in a speech Wednesday on reducing risk and increasing transparency of derivatives at the International Swaps and Derivatives Association annual meeting. Most crypto tokens are investment contracts under the Supreme Court's Howey test. That is shocking that he thinks uh, now most. Previously, I believe the word he used was many, but now he's saying the majority. Gary said, few cryptocurrencies are like digital gold and therefore commodities, implying the SEC should have greater jurisdiction over crypto instead of the CFTC, which regulates commodities. Senator Lummis, along with Senator Gillibrand, are readying comprehensive legislation to regulate cryptos, and they believe most cryptos are commodities, which would put them under the jurisdiction of the CFTC for trading spot and futures markets, though Lummis said the crypto products that uh, for crypto products that are bundled in securities, they would have the so-called Howey test, a case law test that helps determine what's a security, which would fall under the SEC. When it comes to derivatives, Gensler said if a derivative contract called a swap is based on a crypto asset, then it is a security-based swap and subject to SEC registration and oversight. Gensler also said derivative trading platforms, decentralized or centralized, that offer security-based swaps need to register with the commission. It is important to recognize that if the underlying asset is a security, the derivative must comply with securities regulations, he said. The SEC charged app developer Abra nearly two years ago for selling security-based swaps to investors without registering with the SEC and for failing to transact those swaps on a registered national exchange, Gensler warned the SEC could bring more cases. Unfortunately, there may be more, he said. We will continue to use all of the tools in our enforcement toolkit to ensure that investors are protected in cases like these. Gary's comments come as the markets have swooned, with Bitcoin down more than 50% from its all-time high and a run on stablecoin UST, which traded as low as 23 cents. So still developing things happening in the market, but Gary Gensler trying to stake his claim as he continues his pursuit for that coveted position as Secretary of the Treasury. And protocol here is the lengthy article and interview with Hester Peirce. She often finds herself at odds with Gary Gensler and wants the SEC to break its unhealthy dynamic with the crypto industry, as we've seen many ongoing fights between Gary Gensler and various members of the crypto community as he seeks to increase his power and influence and rein in cryptos under his control here. So now let's take a look at what's going on with her comments. She is often celebrated in memes as Crypto Mom and has been considered the crypto industry's staunchest ally on a regulatory body that's become the industry's nemesis. It's an off-target moniker and a flawed portrait, she says. It's kind of funny because I don't have children, she told Protocol in this wide-ranging interview. She denies being an advocate for the industry and thinks it's bad for people to think of the government in parental terms. But Hester Peirce is sympathetic to the crypto industry's key complaint about the SEC, that under Chair Gary Gensler, the agency has failed to offer adequate guidance to the industry on the regulations that apply to crypto and digital assets. A lot of people say to me, just tell us what the rules are, we'll figure out a way to comply with them, she said. The SEC's heavy emphasis on enforcement, she argues, is a mistake. When the agency announced last week that it would nearly double the size of its enforcement team, a plan that entails hiring more supervisors, investigative staff attorneys, trial counsels, and fraud analysts, she asked in a, in a tweet, 
Why are we leading with enforcement in crypto? Peirce elaborated on her criticisms of the SEC's approach to crypto in her interview here. She shared what she thinks of Gary's leadership and why she believes there's an opportunity to break the unhealthy dynamic between the SEC and the crypto industry. Now, this is a lengthy in, uh, interview here, so I'm going to bypass a few things that aren't quite so relevant and focus on the things that are going to be most pertinent to the XRP community and the larger crypto community as it relates to enforcement, Gary Gensler, and some of the other items that are most pressing to us. So why are you critical of the move to expand the SEC's enforcement team, she's asked. The number of lawyers you have looking at cyber issues and crypto issues in itself is not the issue. The issue is that we have a dearth of work being done at the agency on the regulatory framework for crypto assets. So why don't we think about spending more of our resources to try and work on a framework that makes sense and address some of the real questions that are out there? We can do work on the enforcement side. There's a lot of fraud to go after in this space. There's certainly a lot of cyber issues. My question is, why not provide guidance on all of those subject matter areas? So it's that lack of balance. We sometimes tend to fall into the trap of thinking about ourselves as an enforcement agency, but we are really an agency that has a lot of tools to build a good framework within which our capital markets operate. One of those tools is enforcement, but it should never be the leading tool that we use unless you're dealing with something like fraud. Well stated by her here, because while enforcement is a tool of the SEC, it shouldn't be their primary motivation and the thing that they are pursuing with the greatest majority of their resources. As is often mentioned, one of the goals, besides protecting investors of the SEC, is to promote capital foundation and formulation to help the markets operate and ensure that businesses are able to raise the funding they need and to provide goods and services uh, to people who need them. So let's put some focus on things like that and create clear rules of the road. The next question, educate me, Commissioner. Chair Gensler does not have to consult with the commission or get a vote to implement something major. No, and that's a good question because the, the way the SEC is set up, the five of us share responsibility for voting on rules, for voting on enforcement actions, but the chairman is the operational head. The staff reports to him. He makes the budget decisions. So a lot of that is concentrated in the chair. So because he has control over the budget, he can allocate those resources to where he sees fit, like adding more into enforcement. So how do you feel about being called crypto mom? Well, on the one hand, I think it's kind of funny because I don't have children. And so I always say, well, I always thought that if I had children, I would never know what they would turn out like. And it's so indeed, this is certainly the case. On the other hand, there are a couple reasons that I push back a little. One, I'm not an advocate for any industry. I think innovation is really important, and I think regulatory relationship to innovation is very important. But I also think it's important for people not to think about the government in parental terms. Because when you do that, then you sort of think, oh, I can sit back and, you know, mom and dad are going to take care of me. And if something goes wrong, I'm going to go live in their basement or they're going to bail me out. This country is about taking responsibility for your actions making decisions for your own life, but the government is there to help you in the sense that we at the SEC help you get the information you need to make decisions. So she's saying, do your own research. We're out there. If there's a fraud, we can go after fraud, but responsibility still lies with you, the decision maker. That's a good segue to the next question. You said in a video that the role of regulators is not to be sitting in every car and telling every driver what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. How does that apply to crypto? I think no matter what you're doing with your money as an individual, you need to be using your own brain first and foremost. You need to be looking out for red flags. That's the same in crypto as anything else. We can play a role in saying there's stuff out there that sounds great. It's in the name of crypto. It sounds new and exciting, and it's potentially fraud, so you've got to be careful but we can also play a role in setting the rules for the road. I'm trying to think about how I translate this to the analogy of the car. If we see that there are people dropping nails in the road so that people will get flat tires, we can go grab those people and pull them out of the road, and we can set up rules by which people have to drive on the road, and that's what I think we failed to do. 
Now what we're doing is we're pulling people over and saying, why didn't you follow the rules of the road? And people are like, what are the rules of the road? And are you, SEC, even the one who should be setting the rules of the road? I think we're sort of getting ahead of ourselves here. Can you talk about your conversations with Gary Gensler about crypto after he took over? I can't specifically about that except to say that Chair Gensler and I do talk about crypto. He's someone who does know a lot about crypto, even though I'm not happy about where we are. We still have the potential to do this the right way, even though we've started out on the wrong foot. He understands a lot about this technology. I think we could do a good job and we just have to set about doing that. Because of his knowledge and his background, I'm still pretty optimistic that we can get it right. So we'll skip ahead a little bit. What's your main criticism of Gary Gensler's approach? My main criticism of the approach this agency has taken is that it is leading with enforcement. It is failing to sit down with people and provide them a productive path to compliance. It's failing to use the tools that Congress gave us to use for just this kind of situation. Of course, Congress didn't foresee crypto or any of the technological developments, but what they did see is that things would change, and so they built this framework and said, all right, SEC, you have broad exemptive power, so when a rule or a principle needs to be adjusted to allow for this new thing to happen, you can make that adjustment and put appropriate conditions around it. That's a long way of saying my biggest complaint is that we have not used the non-enforcement authority. We have to make a workable way for this industry to innovate in ways that appropriately balance our regulatory objectives with the need to move forward. So again, her continuous uh, drumbeat is that, hey... We are focused on enforcement solely, but we have not used non-enforcement authority to provide regulatory clarity and give people a path forward, especially these businesses that want to do things the right way. And so because of that, you have confusion in the marketplace and you have frustration among market participants. I'm going to skip ahead here even further about some of the things that they talk about in particular around lending because I want to get to one question in particular. So in the very end of this interview, they're asked, or she's asked specifically, I want to touch on the Ripple lawsuit since you were there when that happened. And as you would expect, I can't talk about ongoing litigation. I get asked about it a lot which I'm sure she does. I see the tweets out there, of course, among the community. And I'm sure when she gets interviewed, it's a topic that comes up very often because it is front and center in the conversation around the SEC and cryptocurrencies. And we'll wrap out her last few questions here because they are important to get the final uh, picture of what's going on with her. What's your biggest worry with crypto, she's asked. I worry about us not just sitting down and doing the hard work to create a framework that makes sense. That kind of framework, that would be good for protection of investors and consumers. It would be good for financial stability. It would be good for market integrity. That's my biggest concern that we're missing an opportunity to do the right thing. Do you own crypto, Commissioner? I do not. For the reasons that we talked about before, I don't feel comfortable owning it. I want to be able to work on these issues, and I wouldn't feel comfortable working on it if I owned it myself. And I'm sure there are ethics concerns there as well. And perhaps Esther Peirce, unlike Bill Hinman, is actually listening to the ethics committee and taking in mind what those conflicts of interest concerns might be. And finally, so Crypto Mom does not own crypto. No, but a lot of her kids do, the people in the crypto world. So there you have it, a great interview with Hester Peirce. There's some really good information in here that I wasn't able to cover in this short video. So I will link this in full down below so you can check it out. See some of the other things she had to say in regards to the SEC versus the CFTC, talking more specifically about BlockFi, Coinbase, lending, uh, the Bitcoin ETF, if that's ever going to happen, and a lot of other topics uh, more general to crypto that I think might be interesting to you. So so again, check out the full article if it's something you're interested in learning more about. Don't forget to check out the link in the description as well as the pinned comment for Voyager. And uh, make sure you get that bonus if you are interested. Also, hit a like if you found any value here. It helps the channel a ton and make sure you get the information most important to you. As always, if you're not subscribed, make sure you do that. 25,000 subscriber giveaway still going on when we get to that point. 
I'll be giving away 2,000 treasury each to five winners. So let's get there as soon as we can because you don't want to miss out on the doubling of the utility x distribution the next couple of months uh, that will be unlocked for you if you are one of the lucky winners enter down in the video description as well thank you so much for spending some of your time here with me i do truly appreciate it i hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and week and i will see you in the next one